All right, guys, we're back. I'm going to start by blowing a whistle. Let's open up yet another page from Payne's Investment Playbook. Socialism, as we all know, is a losing policy as it stops economies from growing. But here's the thing. It also makes people very lazy. In fact, the question was posed by La Pointe magazine. I know Liz Clayman would correct me on that. <laughs> and she asked, and they asked, rather, are the French lazy? Well, yesterday in France, Fr Francois Hollande dissolved his government as the, the nation continues to fall apart. It's really approaching that natural conclusion of socialism running out of other people's money. But how can these guys really ever get back to work? Think about this. France, and you talk about the big countries out there, on a yearly basis, they work so many fewer hours than anyone else. 1,400 for them, almost 1,800 for America, Mexico, 2,200. And then when it comes to spending, their, their budget, they spend 56%, the government, 56% of GDP is government spending. How do you sustain that? Germany is almost at 45%, at 41%, America's high. Here's the consequence of that kind of stuff. In 2008, the OECD ranked France the fifth largest economy, but just in six years, guess where they're going to be? Well, on the cusp of slipping out of the top 10 based on purchasing power, look who's behind them, those hardworking Mexicans. Now, the central tenet, of course, of socialism is the, the parental state where that ostensibly gives things away, right? All these things that are essential to life. It's a shared scenario that limits the excess wealth, and it creates this fair utopia for everybody. But the fact is, the more the government gives stuff away, the less people will have the impetus to get it for themselves. In fact, we have the same sort of scenario in America. The longer someone is on welfare and food stamps in this country, the longer that person's going to be on welfare and food stamps. Almost 41% of people on food stamps have been on them for at least 10 years or longer in America. All right, guys, let's discuss this because um, I, I, I love what's going on in France, only because it's the ultimate cautionary tale. I mean, Hollande's popularity is down to 17%. His government is complete disarray. And I think it's great for us because we can segue into the ills of big government and why America's on the wrong track. And we can, we can do it without, by not really focusing on the wrong things. We can focus on what I call human nature. Instead, in this country, every time we talk about right, fewer government programs uh, like welfare, it's always colored by race or someone being afraid of being called a racist. Here's the real deal, Danny. How do we deal with the fact that people on government programs get there, sometimes they can be on them so long, that they don't know how to get off of them. Right, they're not incentivized. You know the old proverb, give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. Uh, teach a man to fish and he'll eat for a lifetime. Well, we've been giving a man a fish. We've been doing it for a really long time. That's the problem with the Peace Corps, for example. They go in and they do everything for people and so they're not incentivized to do it for themselves. We have to incentivize people to do things for themselves. And what does that look like? Well, one suggestion I would have is for the government to incentivize small business, hear me out, and small business then to take either grants or tax cuts or something like that in order to train and employ people but who are on assistance. that you're asking for a form of corporate welfare yourself then. No, I'm asking to align the stakeholders, right? We need to align the government with small business with the people who need help. You're aligning all the same people in the, in the straight it's line. It's still way too, too many hands in the call for, I think. Go ahead, Kate. I was going to say it's very hard to reconcile the news that we've recouped all of these jobs that we lost in the Great Recession when still more than 100 million people in this country are on some form of welfare. And as you said, they've been on it for 10 plus years. That's an issue with you know, mentality and it being easy and it's too hard to actually wean yourself It's not just that. mentality, though. The rules of the game have changed. It is easier to qualify for welfare under the Obama administration. It is much, you, you know, the income limitations, the age limitations, right. everything going on at home, it is easier. Well, and look at all the money they've spent advertising Right, it. I exactly. mean, you drive into work and you may find out you're eligible not to work. And food stamps. You get these two cute old ladies talking about how it's healthy dieting when you go on food stamps. But here's the thing, Matt, I want to talk about the Faustian deal that people enter into. At some point, you've said to yourself and, and, and to the government, okay, you're going to take care of me. I'm not going to take care of myself anymore. In return, you've got my vote. Absolutely, and that's what Obama's been doing from day one, in my opinion, you know, keeping them down, and they now need him. The, the lower class didn't need the government now. Now they need the government to live, to put food on the table. And you know what? If they're living a decent life down there, what incentive do they have to move up that little, that, that you know, right, to because, work? Because, because that welfare there. check is the equivalent of flipping burgers at exactly. McDonald's. And it's why actually even I, more. We probably. got a tweet for you that I think you might disagree with. So Trey Santa says, we're conditioned to believe that welfare dependency is about payments from the government, but what about the tax break? that the extremely wealthy get? Uh, I'm not sure what tax break he's talking about, but I will say this much. When, when Mitt Romney talked about people liking gifts, 
I can see where someone who was poor in the projects would say, well, your, your mortgage deduction is also a gift. Uh, but I do think that there are two separate things in a sense that you do put money into the system. You do mm -hmm. pay a mortgage. You do go to work. You do buy gasoline and you do, you know, generate income. You generate revenue. You make the economy come to life as opposed to sitting in a bed watching, you know, cartoons and eating Cheerios. Going back to France for a second, Sarkozy really did try to do this incentivization of, for the economy. You know, he tried to do these uh, these uh, tax-free overtime hours. It didn't work. He tried to reform pensions. It didn't work. He uh, did? Yes. <laughs> he did. Is and that it what didn't work. And, he, and, and no one liked it and people didn't, you know, it, it's whenever, I don't think it's necessarily the, as much as we want to say the it government. It underscores the, government's the problem, point, Heath, yes. uh, that, that you're just proving my point. The last time they had a budget surplus in France was 1974. Sure. Hmm. Once you've given them, uh, given away 56% of GDP as government spending, of course you can't take the punch all the way. people get angry. People protested that. They were very, very angry. But Charles, well, don't now want two to generations. That's, that's, that's the issue that. we have in this country. If it goes to the next generation living yeah. off this, then we're in but trouble. But what do you Give do to tough. incentivize people? How do you change the game? Uh, well, you got to take away. You got to be tough. You got to. Yeah, it's the called checks. tough love. Cut emphasis the on love. Emphasis on tough. Hey, government spend a lot of money, and those trying to buy votes, well, they spend even more. And then, of course, there are private companies that make a ton of money off of socialism pro 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 policies. Uh, you know, let's face it. Nancy Pelosi talks about it all the time, right? The multiplier effect. Rich people get their welfare checks, and immediately they plow it back into the economy. So let's take a little bit of a different angle on this. Let's talk about. Some of the investments that can be made in a socialist society, Matt. Uh, I have two for you. I have one, if you're going to be the shopping, you know, I, I think TJX companies, which is TJ Maxx, uh, I live next to one, and, and I see that type of clientele going in all the time. I think you're going to spend some money there. The other one is Pepsi. I get a couple of bucks in your, in your pocket. What's better than some Frito-Lays you know, and a Pepsi and a Gatorade? So I think that's another area you see people spend money. You got any ideas? I think Walmart. Um, yeah. I think Walmart really targets those yeah. people, um, you know, getting those welfare checks, and they cater to that specific demographic. When they, when they cut back food stamps, Walmart stock went down when they increased food stamps. Walmart stock yeah. went up. Right. They, I mean, Walmart is probably the biggest beneficiary from this gigantic socialist utopia, if you will. You have any ideas? Well, you know, I would kind of look at, at companies that, uh, you know, cable companies like uh, uh, um, Time Warner Cable and Comcast, because those are things that people don't really have necessarily until they have a little bit of money in their pocket. Yeah, I know, and that's part of keeping, just keeping it comfortable enough so you don't get out of it. Okay, I've got one now for Kate. Mm. Uh, listen, we always hear about how lazy the millennials are and how entitled they are, but when adults don't work for long periods of time, you know, it does not create... Uh, and and, and you know, it, it creates sort of an expensive problems for people who do work, Kate, and and that's where we are. Like I understand the the the, the sort of the mentality that I'm used to getting this. I deserve it. It's, 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 I, I, I never know any different, but the people who are working, it's unfair for them. It's absolutely unfair, and I'm a millennial who works, and I don't like to see parts of my money, you know, go to people that may need assistance, but may not need assistance. Just because you started getting help right out of college doesn't mean that you need to stay on it for 10 plus years, so I think it's a mentality shift. I like to see young people get out there and hustle and work really hard and want to climb up that way. Here's the thing, guys. We talked yesterday about millennials uh, not wanting Burger King, not wanting McDonald's. They have extra cash to go to Chipotle, right? I mean, really, I mean, uh, the reason I think older people like me got hooked on McDonald's because it was the cheapest thing out there. <laughs> I didn't have an option. They have options because they can spend a lot of money on things they like and still chill out with mommy and daddy. It is short-term gain, and that's why they are living in mom and dad's basement. That being said, though, there's not tons of jobs available out there. Yeah, it's jobs. <laughs> you just got to go work it. It's not the job you study for. 